All right, we're gonna do a quick video. This video is about scale using Scalar, but this will apply primarily to those that use the keyboard, uh, the QWERTY keyboard that is, and that may not have a um, physical keyboard. You can do this in iOS by using, and I've shown this where you can, because you can obviously touch on the screen on the iPad, because remember Scalar 2 only works on the iPad currently and on uh, desktop. You can actually go into Scalar and just press the pads. But they don't sound very humanized until you do this step here. Now, mind you, I just moved this up an octave just so it'd be there. Press the humanize button. Now, you can, it'll trigger initially on to velocity. I personally like to see velocity and timing on. This means that some of your notes will be a little bit off, right? They won't be right directly on the, the line. But that's the MIDI notes that is I'm speaking of. But that's okay, because that kind of gives it the human feel, right? And you can go in and do the quantize, the swing, if you want to do that. I'm not going to mess with that. But I wanted to show you that even if you don't have the keyboard, when I say the keyboard, I mean the uh, physical keyboard in front of you, because right now I'm in transition of getting a different keyboard. I like the one I had, but I want something that's a little less extra features and more focus on just the basic features that I need personally from that keyboard. But you see where I locked it here, right? Like I, you've seen me do this before. You press this button and it kind of, it locks it to this to these uh, notes, to these keys here. I always like to have mine on all the notes, not just the white keys on this. And it's for the purpose of saving space because there's a lot of chords here. If you don't have a lot of chords, you can leave it on just the white keys if you want. It's up to you, depending on what your situation is. So it doesn't matter. I'm just using the scale as an example. So you'll see, this is what I want to show you. And I'm going to tilt the phone, so bear with me as I do that. Okay. There you go. All right. So this layout, you've seen me talk about these before. It's just a keyboard cover layout. This is for Ableton. I have one for Logic. And they make a few other ones. I think Bitwig might have one. They're on Amazon. I think they're usually around 10 15 bucks, something like that. I like them because if I forget or need to know a keyboard command, I can do it. I've kind of gotten used to Ableton now, so I've kind of got most of the key commands that I use down. Um, of course, they're there for my purpose of learning, but they're also there because there's two things that I've learned is that you can use this as the actual keyboard. You'll see people in, uh, uh, not Fruity, yeah, Fruity Loops. They'll be they'll either draw the notes in or they'll use the keyboard here. And you always I always thought that was cool that they could do that um, because then it means you could just take your laptop and make music, which you still can do. Well, the good thing is Ableton can do that too. So I'm gonna close Scalar just for a second here and I'm going to open this uh, notes that I played here. And if you hit the command in Ableton, hit B, you'll see a pencil come up. You can see the pencil right there. See I'm moving it. You can literally draw in notes just like you would draw in notes on Fruity Loops. Same principle. I'm not a drawing note kind of guy. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not my style. But I do like to use the QWERTY keyboard as my instrument sometimes. And recently I thought it might be fun to explore it a little bit more. Well, when you lock the keyboard in Scalar, you'll see here, I'm going to bring it back up. I can't, I'm, I'm trying to keep the keyboard focused on the bottom half of this keyboard. Okay, I'll bring it up a little bit so you can see, kind of see it. You'll see it moved again. I'm going to put it here that it locks it in, right? And I can still play. Now I'm gonna play notes. My notes start with A, they go across, except for. So they go A to L, but you have, just like a keyboard. So it's like C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. Skip that note, right? Cause the next note will be F, then it's F sharp, G. G sharp, I'm sorry, G sharp is right here. Then this would be, um, brain drawn blanks. Don't disregard what it shows up here, but I'm just telling you that's like the keyboard layout, okay? Because when it goes up here, it's mapping it to that so you can get confused. But if you can look up here, let's see if I can show you. I'm gonna have to move this back and forth to make this work, okay? You see that white note right there? 
that indicates I'm playing that actual key. So wherever that white note is, it's indicating what key I'm playing. So you'll see you have pretty much here, now I have to scroll down so you can see it, me playing it. I kind of want you to see me playing a little bit too. Let me see if I can move this down. There you go, that might help you. All right. So like, let's say I wanted to press those chords, uh, chord, right? So you could do chords, you could do melody on that. Obviously you're not gonna sit here and bang this, okay? This is your keyboard for your computer. Don't, let's not go that far. We, we're not that aggressive, but we are gonna use it. So how are we gonna use it? Well, if we set the human up, like I said, if you turn on human and put both the velocity and time in, if it comes out pretty good as far as it's almost like you're playing it. So I'm gonna show you, like I play pretty much. Okay, now I played something like that. I can't remember exactly the notes right now because my brain is trying to show you this. But I'm going to close this for now. And here's what it sounds like played. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit differently. Man, if anybody ever want to invest in something for me, <laughs> aka myself, because ain't nobody invested in nobody but yourself, um, I need to get a another arm to do these videos better. So there's the playing. I'm going to Pinch zoom. Oh, you can see, you should be able to see. I just wanted to make sure you can see it all the way in there. Try to zoom back a little. All right, so there it is. So you, if you look closely, you can see these notes right here are staggered. See, that one's a little ahead. This one's a little off, a little off, right there, right on the line. So that gives you that velocity feel. Now, mind you, I did literally did that on this key, on this uh, computer keyboard. I did not use a single, I don't have one anymore other because I sold the other one I had. So, and that's okay, I'm fine with that because this actually might be my new method to this madness to, to create this way um, because I think it sounds just as good as when I use the keyboard. I mean, literally I'm pressing a button just like I was there and it's just a velocity. It wasn't like it was weighted keys or anything. So, but check this out. This is just a simple riff. Turn this uh, clicker off. Okay, so let that keep running. I'm gonna turn the scaler back on. Now I'm gonna turn this off and I am gonna this time map it, scale notes only. Actually, let's do, let's do white keys on this one. So, I'm gonna show you something. So if you leave it on white keys, then on the keyboard, you're only playing from the A to the L. And if you look here, now you gotta look back here. You see it's playing the scale for you? That's what mapping it to the white keys is doing, right? Now check this out. If you go here, and because we don't have a velocity sensitive keyboard, where you could play the melody and get that feel, you technically sort of do with this on. So turn on velocity instead of turning on timing, because your time is gonna be your playing, right? It's different with the chords, because you want the chords to feel, like when you're just doing the melody, just turn on timing. I hope this is not moving on you guys. I'm sorry if it is, I apologize, apologize in advance. And you'll see, I'm gonna turn that off. I'm gonna go down here. Now I have mine set up, if you can look over here, with scalar, which if it's keys, chords, whatever, it's always gonna be scalar to track that it's pulling from. So I'm playing through this one, through this channel, which is the scalar track, you can see there, and that's how I'm playing the notes. So it should, pause for a second, pause, not, 
Okay, Scalar. Oh, you know what? I don't have a piano on there. <laughs> that won't work. So let's see, I use Contact, Gentleman, Piano, which is the one I like. So we'll do another Contact, we want the same piano. Where did I put, okay, Gentleman. Okay, boom, it's in there now. All right. Because obviously these keys are, these keys on this regular keyboard, typing keyboard, are not velocity sensitive. So we're going to add that velocity in by having it randomize it. So let's do that now really quick. Oh, but that's not working. You know why? Because we're playing in the same key that the chords are happening in. So how do we fix that? Hmm. Let's see here. All right. Simple fix. Watch this. Go to here and let's see where those chords are playing at. Right, I'm gonna play the chords so we'll know which octave. By the way, you see this here where it says C2 and it says C3 and C4? That's telling you which octaves these uh, keys are set to, but you won't know which octave the chord is playing in until you play the chord. That, does that make sense? Here's what I mean. Take off the key lock. So see where this note is hitting right here? Hold on, let me play the notes that are in this thing. So the furthest note out is in C4. So when you go back in and you wanna lock the keys, you're gonna to have to get make sure you're playing in below C4, or you're playing into the notes that you already have, if that makes sense. So I'll try to explain that. So how do you fix, excuse me, fix that on here, right? Because the first note is showing C2. Well, the cool thing is you can move octaves with X and Z. So if you wanna move an octave, hit X now. Hold on, you gotta turn off this. So let me go back. So here's Z. lock to the scale. Oh, you take that off. Okay, so C2. So it goes up to D, C3. So we're going to go X and move forward. Now you notice it's hitting C3. Let's do X one more time. C4. Let's go X one more time. All right, I'm going to go Z. I'm going to go back to C4. I think we're okay. We can play from there. All right, let's map it to the white keys again. All right, there it is. Oh, you can't see it. <laughs> Sorry about that. So now you'll see before I go into this next one, my first note. Wait, turn off this so you can see what my first note is. Technically is right there, C4, right? So we're in a, we're up this far in the octave. Our, our one of our chords hits here, so we're trying to play notes over here. So we're gonna lock the scale. All right, we're good. Now we're playing in the octave way up here. So we should be good to go. Let's go ahead, leave on velocity, leave on the map to the white scale or to the white keys. That was weird, I said that backwards. All right, and then let's go ahead and get the melody played this way. It's It seems like a lot me explaining it to you right now because if you're first seeing this or whatever, you're probably thinking like, what in the heck is he talking about? But I'm being honest that you can play it all on here. Because a lot of times, if you don't play your melody and keys at the same time anyway, then this won't matter to you. It's basically like having, it's like having uh, one octave, being able to play one octave, a keyboard with just an octave with a few extra keys, okay? But that's okay, we like that because we can still get stuff done, especially with Scalar, right? It makes it even easier. So let's play a melody, just make something up.
Okay. Command Z will erase whatever path. Not the best melody, uh, obviously, but just to show you it can be done. All right, so that's it for this video. I just wanted to show you that you can, on the keyboard, literally play. So if you don't have a keyboard, don't feel like, well, man, I can never use that. On the iPad, the obvious answer is just touch the screen. You can play the chords. But if you know, like I know, it's very hard to play uh, keys on an iPad, unless you have maybe the iPad 12.9 or something like that, then it could get easier. But your, if your fingers are anywhere close to mine, I have fat fingers, then it's virtually impossible. And that's why I always kept a keyboard, which I will be getting another one. But that's why I always had one, because I felt like I could control where the fingers hit. With the keyboard, the typing keyboard, I find it easier because I'm used to typing something, right? So I can, I can feel where the fingers are touching. So again, it's something physical to do to use. I could use the uh, SP you hear there. You see, it'll control. If you can see, well, I don't know if you can see it. If you can, it can control the uh, notes, but I don't like the pads for the notes. The only one I've ever liked like that was like the launch pad, the X or the Pro. Those two are great for playing melodies and notes and stuff like that they they actually work well but i haven't found any other drum pads that i'm just like oh i want to play a melody on it but if there was one i would say the sp just because i like these pads better than most pads out there including the mpc and i know a lot of people hate me for saying that but i've owned the mpc live and as much as i live too that is and as much as i do enjoy that i think that's the best mpc for the price I just wasn't using it like that much enough to justify the cost. $1,300. When, I don't they may be 14 now, but when the SP is only like 500 bucks, 550. So I get more out of the SP with drumming and sampling. You know, it's like having your own drum machine, machine but it's technically a sampler, but your own drum machine. So, and I love the effects. I can't deny that. But anyway, all right, that's it for this video. Like I said, utilize those whatever tools you can from this video to help you. My goal is to just show you using the QWERTY keyboard as your keyboard to, to play melodies and particularly to play chords. It's even better with chords while well, I'm using Scalar 2. All right, I'm out.